Was it you who coined the phrase that the beard is the push-up bra of the face? <laughs> I don't know if, if I... If you didn't coin it, you said it once. <laughs> I did, maybe. <laughs> Hey, it's Greg Brzezinski for Beard Brand Alliance, and today I'm joined by Mark Leone. You might recognize this guy. If you make it to the end of our videos, and I sure hope you do, he is often the guy, what's your line? That Beard Brand makes you feel kind of handsome. I think that's uh, a, sentiment that, a sentiment that a lot of people can agree with. Uh, the beard Brand products do make you feel good, but there are certain things that don't make men feel good. And we're going to talk about one of those today. Uh, Mark has been gracious enough to uh, come and uh, agree to talk with us. I also just wanted to introduce Mark. He's been a friend of the Alliance for a long time. If you uh, are on the Alliance, and if you aren't on the Alliance, I suggest that you join. A uh, fantastic place where you can meet like-minded uh, people and talk about anything. It's not just about beards. Uh, it's about general grooming, hair. It's about life. And Mark has been very transparent in sharing um, his family, and in particular, your son. My older son, Mateo, who is, uh, he'll be 18, is, uh, he just graduated high school, and he was in the barbering program, and he just got licensed in the state of Pennsylvania to cut hair. So he's working at uh, Shaving Grace in Exton, uh, Chester County, PA. Where did the idea of him to become a barber come from? Oh, it's funny you ask. <laughs> funny you ask. Because uh, his dad was watching Beard Brand videos, and... Uh, he started watching kind of over, over my shoulder and uh, started to become interested and entertained by all of it and started, started asking questions and just became, yeah, just became organically kind of interested in it and seeing all the content from Beard Brand Online kind of sealed the deal. So back to the point uh, that Beard Brand makes Mark feel good. Um, what are some things that don't make you feel good? <sighs> As I approach <laughs> the age of 50, uh, going, going bald, having, having thinning thinning hair. Just really took me by surprise in a weird kind of way about, I don't know, seven-ish years ago and started, I noticed it in a photo and it freaked me out to be, <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, and so, yeah, so that doesn't, that, that uh, has given me a little bit of insecurity about about the look. Yeah. I, I did a series about the Norwood uh, scales of um, baldness and uh, if you remember one of those, you know, 95% of all people will experience some amount of hair recession, at least to a mature hairline, um, and then many beyond that. And uh, by the age of 60 or 70, a lot of people show significant amount of hair loss. And so um, that can make guys, and I think it's probably one of the number one, it's the number one thing I think about guys' appearance that might wig them out the most. True. Would, you know, I don't know any scientific information, but guys will let their midsection spread, but the minute they see their hair going, um, it's a symbol of, I think it's one of the, what we think is a symbol of lost youth and uh, potentially lost beauty. I think about it myself, and <laughs> we've, we've talked about this a sufficient amount. Uh, like I, you know, I have a mature hairline and it's getting more mature. And uh, I, it's something that I worry about, you know, as I work in the industry. But even if I wasn't doing, working in the industry, I would still be worried about it. You know, we've made videos before about like guys should just embrace it, embrace it and feel good about it. Um, but some, do you have to? Like, is it okay for a guy to um, think that he might want to do something to his hair if it is receding? And that's what I'm wrestling with. And that's why Mark came on here. And so we've been talking about this for probably the last eight months or so. Probably. Yeah. And I've done just a little bit of research you know, for him. I've called a couple of uh, hair surgeons in um, North Jersey as well as in Philadelphia. And I was calling for a friend. And I was calling for a friend. And they were like, okay, this friend of yours. And they all assumed it was me. And, uh, and I'm like, no, no, I'm calling for a friend. And so we actually, but I have to admit, I, was, I wanted to learn more myself about the process that one would um, look into if you were going to consider a hair restoration. What is a hair restoration? So there's a couple of different types, right? A couple of different methods, uh, but they're basically all moving hair follicles from one part of your scalp to the uh, lesser populated part of your scalp. 
and they do that by, di by different methods. Yeah, there's a strip method and then individual hair, which is the... Uh, follicle unit uh, extraction. extraction. Yes. And then... FUT. FUT, follicle unit transplant, not tra trans... Transfer. Transfer. Yeah, which is the strip method. So to just give you a little in, uh, background information on everyone's scalp, there is a donor region of hair um, that you will never, generally, never lose. What they do is uh, make sure that you have enough hair to move from that donor area to any particular areas where you might want to infill hair. Mark and I actually had a consultation with a provider here in Philadelphia. Do you want to talk about your concerns about your hair? Because I'm looking at you now, you have what appears to be a nice looking head of hair. You're being nice. Uh, I pre yeah. So here's what I'm wrestling with. So um, yeah, it's, I'm torn because I am losing my hair. I'm, get, I'm going thin on the crown. Um, so I'm a little bit insecure about that, as I, th as I think most men are, right? That, that area on the crown. And also, more so, my hairline, which is, is an uneven hairline, and it's obviously receding uh, also like a lot of men. And so I'm just trying to, you know, do I embrace that? As Again, I mentioned I'm going to be 50 this coming year, at the end of this year. And so do I embrace that? Uh, do I, you know, do I grow old gracefully, as they say? Do I embrace the natural, you know, evolution of my hair uh, to include, you know, the loss of it and style it, you know, in accordance with it, you know, slowly going away? Or do I, do I go and get some sort of uh, enhancement, replacement, you know, by one of these, any one of these many methods? There's uh, two phases really to a hair transplant. It's, you know, you have the consultations, you meet with the doctors and all that. There's a recommendation about how many grafts they're going to take. In this case with the FUE, they're moving single or double hairs from the back of your hair into each of those locations. They put a little micro incision and they're taking the, 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 the individual follicle of hair and they're basically moving it to where they put the incision in the front. The art comes in how, you know, um, how good the surgeon is in terms of matching a hair pattern or you know, making it look as natural. You've all seen bad hair transplants. Um, many, many, it's, it's, it's easier now to do a better transplant because of the FUE method. You're not moving clumps of hair, you're moving individual hairs. Um, so th that's the basics of hair transplant. Uh, make an incision, move the hair from the back, put it in the front, um, and, and within a short order, that hair falls out uh, that, they, or, that they put in. It doesn't fall out. Um, the hair actually sheds itself. And then over the course of the next year, that hair will grow back. Uh, a little thinner at first and then get dense and it'll uh, match the, tent the original um, texture of what it was in the back. All good. And, you know, there are excellent examples in Hollywood, in politics, of uh, people who have had transplants um, that you would not even recognize. I mean, they have gotten so good, especially in um, the film industry, you know, A-list actors, guys in their 30s and 40s who have had hair restoration. I think gone are the days where someone might notice that you had a hair transplant. And that's the attractive part because so many of, of those people that you're referring to, I had no idea until you point, you being in the industry are aware of somebody. I had no idea. And I, I remember saying to you, like, there's no way, yep. there's no way. And you know, he absolutely has it. He absolutely has it. And so it's so good. Some of the techniques, some of the doctors out there are so good at it. Give me a list of three pros, why you would be considering this and uh, three nays. Well, obviously, you know, the, a full head of hair, uh, a more even hairline, a crown that's not uh, shiny and showing my scalp. Uh, obviously you feel more confident, more, more comfortable. You know, I'm a recovering Guido from, you know, from my earlier years, you know, so I like my hair was, I'm an Italian boy from North Jersey. So it, my hair was very important to me, you know, so. Is this and, the and scene it, out of uh, Saturday Night uh, <laughs> Fever? Pretty much. Where yeah, uh, John Travolta does his hair and, yeah. and someone goes to touch it yeah, and, and he, he freaks, out. freaks out? Yeah, yeah. putting yeah. on shirts while by stretching the neckline so you don't touch your hair. <laughs> That's me. So a fuller head of hair makes one look younger, more attractive, more symmetrical, all those things. So that's, yeah, just to the eye, you look better. I, I think, you know, not to say that people who are bald or thinning don't look because that works for them as well. But I don't think, I, it, I think it's getting worse the more I lose hair and the further my hairline recedes. When you feel good about yourself, whether it's your body, being in shape or your hair is right, then that 
I think that prompts you to want to, you know, invest in other things about yourself, your clothing, your wardrobe, you know, so it's like, I feel like it has a kind of a cascading effect with your whole entire look. Okay. So pluses. So pluses. negative. Well, you're, you're, we're talking about basically a year investment, right? With, you know, time being laid up, uh, by the, the time for the hair to, to come in, fall out, come in again. Yeah, the initial downtime when you do this, um, you're out for a, uh, four days, basically, of laying down and not moving around a lot and not working out. I think they said two weeks out of the gym. After that, it's basically, you know, there's no um, maintenance, but you're not going to look good when the initial hair starts popping in um, because you're going to look like you've shaved a portion of your head as that hair. And so... Right. One of the down things that I see is that um, you have to be very patient and figure out how you're going to wear your hair when that is happening. Um, so in no particular order, downtime, money, money, and maintenance. Maintenance. Uh, those are the three as I see. Okay, so going back to when you get a hair transplant, um, if you are this level or, you know, if I wanted to say touch up my hairline and move it down a little bit, they're going to put hair in there and that hair is never moving. So those are the donor hair, if you remember does not fall out and they're going to put hair on your hairline and on the top of your crown that's never going to fall out but what happens if you continue to be going bald and so you're going to have to go on a product like uh, uh, finasteride which is blocks dht to the scalp which um, will prevent your hair from falling out in the majority of cases and then they also recommended that you use minoxidil um, to um, you know, maintain growth, encourage new growth also. And so you're looking at a lifetime commitment of not only um, you know, wherever you put those hairs, but of staying on two medications for the duration of how you want, for as long as you want it to appear that you have a full head of hair. The minute you stop these two products, um, and if you were going to go bald naturally, then all of that hair is going to fall out and you will be left with the transplanted hair only. So Side effects. Side effects. And there's potential side effects with finasteride and with um, minoxidil heart palpitations to um, sexual side effects. For some people, like one and a half percent uh, people have... Uh, erectile problems with uh, finasteride because of the blocking of the DHT. And so there are serious, re potential serious repercussions that you have to really consider. So that's a big negative in my opinion, that you're gonna have to, the expense of that as well as um, just maintenance for, if you start at 50 for the next Indefinite. 40 years, yeah. Indefinite. And so uh, something to consider. Cost, you mentioned. And so that is really dependent on how the surgeon and the location. There's all of those things. Um, in Philadelphia, it's probably more expensive than if you went over to Turkey, which seems to be the epicenter of hair transplants today, if you look at the pages of Instagram. But how much work do you want to have done You know, in the front of your hair, on the crown? And so you're looking at a unit price per graft, and it's anywhere from $4 up to... seven. Seven dollars, depending on the volume of graphs. I've heard as much as eleven and twelve in the Hollywood, and so per unit. And we're talking a minimum of a thousand graphs, average probably more like twenty-five hundred graphs. So do the math. I mean, you're looking at something that is going to be ten to twenty thousand dollars, depending on your needs. A and so a lot of money. And it also seemed like from the consultation that we had, that uh, or that I had, uh, that a lot of it, it's kind of like a, like there's an art to it, right? Because that doctor uh, not only has to transplant the, the follicles correctly in the, in the correct places, and, but he's also, or she's choosing uh, follicles that are health, that the healthy follicles. And he or she are hand selecting the proper follicles because not every follicle of hair, right, is suitable to be transplanted. So that doctor has to have this sort of expertise to know which hairs are the healthy ones, which hairs are gonna be the ones that are gonna be resilient and, and uh, transplant well. Yeah, and once again, that probably has an uh, impact on price. You're probably looking at a better doctor who has a reputation for doing, you know, not only skilled work, but artistic work. But, there's one more thing. Oh, one more, go there's ahead. A, I, would, I would call it maybe the, the philosophical. So there's a, if I'm being honest, there's a part of me that if I were to get this done, that I would feel, I'm, I'm struggling to find the word, but is it disingenuous? Is it, what is it, what is it that makes me hesitate about potentially doing this that makes me feel like inauthentic? Like I want to look better. 
I want to, I want to be more, who doesn't want to be more attractive? Who doesn't want to have a full, but there's a, there's a little bit something in there that causes me to feel like it would be inauthentic. I wouldn't be. So I, that's, that's really the struggling point. For me, you know, like, um, if I, you know, wanted to fill in my temples a little bit, would I feel as a hair and beard model, beard model disingenuous? Gen it's, it's, a great, it's a great question. And as we talked about, you're this icon of, you know, of style and fashion at a man, uh, as a man of a certain age. And so does something happen to that if you now get hair transplanted? Well, you, you brought it up that uh, my whole platform is based on the fact that you're growing old naturally. It's your whole, it's your whole thing. <laughs> it's my whole thing. But yeah. if you take money out of the equation, if money was not the issue, I, I would still be struggling with this. Ah, got it. So for that philosophical piece. I, I actually would too. Okay. I know we have a lot of um, you know, guys who shave their heads. And I, I've been very you know, vocal about the fact that I think the shaved head with the beard is a fantastic look. Mm -hmm. Like, would you ever shave your head? I, I, would, I would shave my head if, it's, if it got to that point. Um, I, I've, I've never ruled that out as an, as an option. Like the beard tempers my insecurity about my thinning hair. Like if I didn't have a beard, so I put my focus and my attention and my energy into the beard. And that I, makes me feel better I, about the thinning hair. I have to say that a lot of guys actually use their beard. And it's been likened to women using makeup. Yeah. You know, like guys can often grow a beard. Um, it can change the proportion of your face. It can hide a double chin. It can make, you know, like the proportions of your face generally look better. And if you have a fantastic beard, I think it does temper the way that you can look at your hair when you are bearded. Any last thoughts? I guess the takeaway that I think we agree that it's 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 like the obvious quite obvious answer is it's a personal decision. It's a comfort level thing. It's um, it's not wrong if someone does it. It's a great if they feel comfortable, it makes someone feel comfortable, and it's not wrong if somebody declines to do it because they feel it makes them inauthentic. Whatever. I think both and both approaches are not wrong. It's, it comes down to the person and right. how you feel about it. Thank you, Mark, for uh, coming today and being transparent about that. Thanks for having me. Appreciate oh, sure. It. It's been fun. It's always good uh, talking with you. Yeah. And uh, thank you, people. If you have any uh, questions, you might want to write them down below and I might be able to answer them. And, uh, and let us know if you want to know anything more about hair restoration. And uh, we'll keep you up to date on whether Mark has a significant change of heart or um, wins the lottery. We'll let you know. <laughs> Until we meet again, beard on. Hey, I'm Mark. I think that Beard Brand products and the Beard Brand mission, they've really helped me kind of wear my beard and present it to the world in a way that, honestly, for the first time in my life, like, kind of makes me feel kind of handsome. You know, sometimes. But anyway, thanks, guys.